basically you've got a little device that sits in the back of their guy's shirts during a game, you probably see a little bit of a lump in the back of their jerseys. Um, they're a device that has obviously GPS with the name, they've got a global positioning system in them which gives us some data in regards to distance and uh, you know that's the most basic one but then uh, they've got accelerometers and different other ometers, they're all sorts of different things that measure things like impacts, um, measure accelerations, decelerations, um, different changes of directions, how many times the boys turn left compared to turn right, um, uh, numerous different data points, different speed zones that they hit, what's their highest speed, all that sort of uh, different physical things that uh, happen in a game. Um, and we use that data then to, to monitor players against his best performance, we monitor players at training in regards to load and we're now trying to take that uh, monitoring to be a little bit more prospective rather than retrospective. So rather than just looking at what it did happen and then react to it and start to use it from a prediction point of view um, in predicting training and stuff like that as well. So. so I come in nice and early before the players get in here and I'll have all the vests labelled and set up uh, and I'll assign each unit to a player. And, and then I'll set up upstairs, set up my laptop um, and get the live aerial all ready so I can get live input from, from, the way, from when the, the players appear. At stage we're using it for monitoring, so the load monitoring is a big one. Um, so we, you know, our players, like I'll use Felix Jones for, his, for an example, Felix gets an absolute every ounce out of training sessions. So sometimes that's dangerous, you've got to protect him from himself. So we'll use that to maybe modify his training or, or give him something different. Um, but then we'll use it for players too from a motivational type sort of tool. The interest of it during the week would be to monitor your load really, just make sure you're not doing too much. And then after a game, uh, it, I mean it depends game to game, you know, on, on weather conditions make a big difference. But I'd like to look at it competitively, you know, to see who's, who's um, getting the highest, highest reps or highest distance or whatever. Game and also during training, I have it live. And, and Bryce will come up to me and say, you know, was, are we getting enough conditioning or how much, what are we getting out of the session? And you may do an off the cuff sort of conditioning block. And similarly, medical staff um, will look at it, uh, will ask me to kind of flag, it, flag up if the players kind of uh, reach the threshold, say, for example, a player's coming back from injury and we don't want him to go over a certain value uh, that we know that's a lot for him. And then I'll flag that up and they can make the call then. It's just more information to make decisions as I said before. In terms of like so, so at the moment like I've got every single game and every single training session and we can start to do more with this information now so it's going to hopefully start to influ influence next season like pre-season so we know what the worst case scenarios are going to be in the game uh, in terms of like you know how much distance is covered, tackles, um, accelerations, decelerations, all these sort of things so we can say the worst kind of four minute block for each position is this we can start to design specific drills uh, to emulate that of a game. So, you know, tra training will no longer just be kind of willy-nilly, not that it ever was, but like it's just going to be more kind of specific. And so we know that's exactly what's going to happen in the game, because ultimately that's what you're trying to do in training, get the players ready for the kind of end product, which is the game. So hopefully players will no longer find those situations worst case. Yeah.